call this Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Roll call. Commissioner Coonan. Here. Commissioner Herrick. Here. Commissioner Ryder. Here. Commissioner Lotz. Here. Commissioner Krieger. Yes. Commissioner Begick. Here. And Commissioner Duranchek. Here. Thank you. Please rise for the uh, invocation of the Pledge of Allegiance. Heavenly Father, we come before you this afternoon thanking you for the guidance and understanding that you have given to the Board of Commissioners. Lord, we ask you again today for your help and direction so this Board may make the fair and proper decisions for all citizens of Bay County. In your holy name we ask this. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Minutes 7, 9, the 19, and 8, 6 of 19. What's your pleasure? Go home. Support. We have motion of support. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. Citizen input. Anyone from the audience would like to say something? Now is your time. Seeing, seeing none, petitions and communications. Uh, this afternoon we are, I am uh, honored to, to present a recognition tribute to uh, Mallory Rivard, Miss Michigan, resolution 2019-172. We'll have the clerk. We have a motion. And support. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. And we'll have it read. Bay County Board of Commissioners, August 13, 2019. Resolution by Bay County Board of Commissioners. Whereas on June 15, 2019, Bay County native Mallory Rivard. Miss Great Lakes Bay was honored as Miss Michigan 2019. And she will go on to compete in the 2020 Miss America pageant program in December. And whereas Mallory Rivard competed with 24 other contestants at the 69th annual Miss Michigan scholarship competition, a three day long pageant that included evening wear paired with giving a social impact statement, an on stage interview, an unjudged fitness routine, in a talent routine as well as private interview with judges and whereas, along with the crown and title, Valerie Rivard, the daughter of Troy and Wendy Rivard, earned a $12,000 scholarship. And whereas, Mallory Rivard, a graduate of Saginaw Valley State University, is currently a first grade teacher at McGregor Elementary School and is working on a master's degree in early childhood education. And whereas education is important to Mallory, Rivard, who as a teacher has seen problems with literacy rates throughout the United States. This topic is a critical part of her platform as Miss Michigan, and Mallory Rivard is using her title to effect a positive change. And whereas the Bay County Board of Commissioners and the Bay County Executive are very proud of Mallory Rivard for earning this Miss Michigan 2019 crown, but more importantly for her platform and her commitment to solving the problems of childhood literacy in our country. Therefore, be it resolved that the Bay County Board of Commissioners and the Bay County Executive hereby honor Mallory Rivard, Miss Michigan 2019, for her accomplishments, applaud her dedication to her platform, read to success, and extend Beth's wishes in this and all future endeavors. Signed, Michael Duranchik, Chair and Bay County Board of Commissioners. Come on right up here. Board of Commissioners will present this to you. Yeah. And I wish you nothing but the best uh, in your pursuit of being Miss America. That'd, that'd be great. You have something you'd like to sure. say? 
So Bay County has always been my home and I'm very proud to be a product of this community and very, very excited that I now get to give back and serve as Miss Michigan this year. Um, like it said, I'm a first grade teacher, very, very passionate about helping kids, especially them learn to read um, because that's a really big problem we see not only in the state of Michigan, but in the United States. So much more work to be done, but I really appreciate this honor this evening and um, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. You'll do a good job, I'm sure. Mr. Barsha. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, congratulate Mallory on becoming Miss Michigan and say that we've been proud of the entire Rivard family for, you know, for many, many years. Your brother Mitch does an outstanding job as the chief of staff or deputy chief of staff, I'm not sure which, to our, con our great congressman, Dan Kildee. And uh, Mallory, I want to thank you for being such a tremendous ambassador for the Great Lakes Bay region, not just Bay County, but also um, all the work you do in trying to educate uh, community leaders, you know, uh, people across uh, Michigan and across, you know, hopefully have to become Miss America across the nation about the importance of literacy to our young people. It is so critical and compliment you on your mission and uh, we're so proud of you and I joined the Board of Commissioners in uh, commending you and saying how proud we are of you and wish you the very best in the coming year as our Miss Michigan and, and hopefully at the uh, competition Miss America you will prevail once again. <laughs> Certainly deserve to. Thank you, Thank you Mallory and Mrs. Rivera. Thank you. Again, thank you very much. I know your schedule's busy. You have one or two more things you have to do to this evening and stuff. Well, thank you very much for taking time to come over here and make us proud. Okay, next we have on uh, presentation 2018 Bay County Audit. Raymond Representative is here. Sir, you have a rough act to follow. <laughs> Not sure I can even compete with that, so I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> okay, well good afternoon. I am Doug Dieter with Raymond, and we've uh, performed the 2018 audit for the county again this year. I have the presentation on the, on the screens. I also handed out uh, hard copies if you want to take any notes or write any questions down. If you do have questions, please don't hesitate to interrupt me at any time. <coughs> so I just want to start off with, uh, we did issue an unmodified opinion. We issued the financial statements back in June. Uh, an unmodified opinion means that uh, it's the highest level of assurance independent auditors can provide. It means the financial statements are fairly presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. This next slide looks at the general fund, which is the general operating fund of, of the county, as you know. And this shows the balance sheet, which includes all the assets, liabilities, as well as the fund balance for the general fund. Each section, so the total assets there, this is as of December 31st, 2018. Total assets of 18376000 with liabilities of $4,478,000. Uh, some deferred inflow of resources that has to do with the, the timing of the collection of the property taxes of 600, almost 650000 and an ending fund balance of $13,248,000. You can see that's split into sep several different categories. You have non-spendable or restricted. Uh, non-spendable is related to long-term type receivables as well as any prepaid type items and then restricted would be anything that is restricted outside of the county so a third party has placed restriction on funds uh, committed would be funds that have been committed by yourself the count the board the commission uh, assigned is just a low you got a lower level that there's some money set aside but not formally done by the board and then unassigned is what's left over and can be used for any purpose so those are the different categories of fund balance This one, in the top of the top of the screen, there's pages to the financial statement audit as well. If you want to get more detail for each slide, uh, the page reference is at the top there for you. So this is the general fund revenues as well as transfers in. So transfers in are money is money that comes from other funds of the county into the general fund. 
Uh, and presented at the bottom is the 2018 final amended budget, what the 2018 actual was, and then compares that to the 2017 actual as well. So the amended budget for revenues was 33942000 and the county came in just a little bit up above that at 34077 So on the positive side of revenues from what was expected, and um, a little bit down from the prior year, 2017, as you can see there in, in the totals. This slide looks at the expenditures for the general fund, broken down to the different functions of the county. Again, the 2018 final amended budget of 38209000 and the 2018 actual of 36146000 So that is about a a two million dollar positive variance where you spent less than what you're expecting to spend and the 2017 actual of 33 million dollars okay so if you look at the revenues less the expense expenditures that's your change in fund balance you can see on this slide the net change what was budgeted was a decrease of fund balance of four million uh, two hundred sixty six thousand and based on the reduction in the expenditures and the increase in the revenue, that 2018 actual change in fund balance was only a decrease of 2069000 Yes, sir? Now, on that particular um, report, the 2018, I think we, we had a, a deficit of over $2 million, and I think what, a million and a half was to uh, fund the VIVA bot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, so we would have had, if we didn't fund the VIVA, well, uh, being that we did fund the VIVA, we would have still had a deficit of about a half a million dollars for 2018, right? Right around there. Um, I can't tell from that. Yeah. There's a few hundred thousand, I think. About half a million dollars yes. to fund uh, that we use from fund balance to balance the budget in, in 18. Okay. Okay. The next few slides are going to look at the pension trust fund as well as the VIBA that you mentioned. So the first one is the pension trust fund. And this is the entire trust fund. So if you if you recall, the trust the pension is made up of Bay County employees as well as BABH employees. So this slide here looks at the total of all that. What is the money set aside to fund the total plan? Um, as you can see there, 2018 compared to 2017, the assets for 2018 were 322 million compared to uh, assets of 356 million in 2017. And we'll look at that change on the next slide of, of why that went down so much. And then there's some liabilities, uh, ending net position, which is all restricted for the pension, obviously, uh, for 2018 is 321 million compared to 356 for 2017. So as you can see on this slide, there was a huge swing in the stock market, as everybody knows. Um, and that's what really impacted your decrease in your, your investments. Uh, as you can see there, the net investment income for 2017 was $58 million and that's for 2017, and that swung the opposite direction to a loss of $21 million. So that's you know, almost an $80 million swing in your investment ba balance based on one point in time of what the stock market was doing at December 31st. Uh, yes, do you have a question? So you're saying in 18, I thought Trump said the market was going Right at the end of the year, yeah. it, it took, a, took a dive again. Yeah, and then January it came right back. Yeah, so it's all, it's all timing. This is just one snapshot, one day December of what 31st. happened, December 31st, correct. Okay. Yeah. So the other activity were the employer contributions as well as the plan member contributions, and then the deductions uh, mainly are the benefit payments out to the retirees that you see there. Okay, so this is the same thing for the VIVA Trust Fund. Again, you'll see the investments for 2018 were 56, almost 57 million compared to 52 million in 2017. Um, and some liabilities for ending net restricted net position of 53 million 116,000 at the end of 2018. Yes, sir. In, in 2017, you had liabilities of 163,000. Yep. In 2018, you had four million. What would that be? That's a very good question. I was going to touch on that. Um, the li mainly liabilities in the pension fund, as well as the VIBA, are pending transactions right at year end that the investment um, advisor is 
either buying or selling investments. So what that is is there's a pending transaction that ended up in your investment balance, but has now, has, the cash has now come out to pay that yet. So it's just a timing thing. That all was settled early January within, I think, the first week of January, if I remember correctly. So what would have the liability been if we looked at early January? Well, it depends. Uh, it's all timing of when the investment advisor buys and sells uh, investments. And, but it was, it was three, I want to say 3.8 million was this one transaction that happened at year end that's showing up in that liability. The 160,000 you see in 2017 is more common with what we see because generally there's not a whole lot of processing, uh, buying and selling investments right at year end. Okay, so this is the, the, how the net position changed during the year. As you can see, similar situation in net investment income and loss, much smaller numbers because you have a lot less invested here, but it went from a $5.9 million investment income in 2017 to a $2.6 million loss in 2018. Um, and as you can see there, employer contributions, as well as the de deductions. And as you know, there are no payments made out of VIBA at this point in time, but with the new standard that went into effect this year, GASB 68 and GASB 67 last year, they both required any pay-as-you-go contributions. So these are the contributions that are paid from each entity that participates in this plan. They're paying the current year premiums of the retirees. So the new standards required that to show as an employer contribution as well as an offsetting um, payment out for the insurance benefits. So as I mentioned, Viva is not actually paying any money out of the trust fund. So what goes in the trust fund is staying there and is building per your um, policy until it reaches a certain level. But because of the new standards, we had to show it this way in the financial statements. Yes, sir. So the eight, what is the 80 million? I mean, what is that? That's right. That is um, the amount contributed into the Viva trust fund as well as pay-as-you-go contributions for all entities. So all the component units, Department of Water and Sewer, Road Commission, <coughs> Medical Care Facility, as well as BABH, and the general county. It's $3 million higher than the previous year. Yes. Um, well, you guys contributed the extra 1.5, right, in 2018. Yeah. And then that would, again, that would include BABHs, which I don't, um, I don't know, I can't remember if they contributed extra or not, Jan, do you remember? A lot of times they do, but I don't know. They didn't? Okay. Okay. Just the regular contributions. Just regular contributions, right. Okay. Anything else? Yes, sir. The VIPA fund, what, what do they want us to add to state that the standard they want us to be at? Are we at that standard or are we getting close to it? Um, I will, we'll touch on that next slide, if you can just bear with me for a minute. Uh, two slides, sir. Okay, so now when I mentioned the previous slides were the whole plan, which included BABH, these next slides look at just the county's portion. And because this is considered a multiple employer plan, that's how we have to look at things. So this is just going to be the county and the component units and medical care facilities. So it's not gonna include, uh, road, or I'm sorry, not gonna include BABH. So the total pension liability, as you can see there, runs a year behind. It shows the December 31st, 2017, total pension liability, which is calculated by the actuary based on the assumptions they use for the plan. The total pension liability is $246 million. The plan net position is the amount of funds sitting in the plan uh, is $298 million. So the county has a net pension asset of $52 million at December 31st, 2017. Now, when, you know, how we talk about 2008, end of 2018, you had the huge decrease. So that net pension asset went down for 2018. But because this is a multiple employer plan and the, the dates and timing of the actuary reports, this information run, runs one year behind the county's fiscal year end. Uh, the next section down below there shows the employer contributions. And this is, um, again, this, the actuarial determined contribution is the amount the actuary says you should contribute to consider to fully fund the plan each year of 1.6 million. And you can see there the county's actual contributions were 2,574,000. So they did contribute almost a million dollars extra between all the different entities um, this year. Next slide is the same information for the retiree healthcare, which would be the VIBA. 
Um, and again, this is going to run a year behind as well because it's considered a multiple employer plan and the timing of the actuarial valuations. So the total OPEB liability according to the actuary was 125 million 410,000 and the plan net position is just under 35 million. So it shows a net OPEB liability of 90 million dollars. And so about 20% funded. Um, again, the 90 million dollars looks like a huge number. It's a huge liability, but this isn't something that's due tomorrow, next year, 10 years from now. It's due over the entire lifetime of every participant and will be spread out as such. Um, and the next section shows the required contributions per the actuary of 9,966,000. That's what they say, if you fund that, you fund the amount they tell you each year, then all the assets will be there when it comes time for the retirees to draw their benefits. So during the year, uh, the county contributed 8.2 million, so uh, about 1.6 less than what the actuary said should have been contributed. So you still are far ahead from other entities when it comes to funding your OPEB and your retiree health care. Um, obviously, you're not in the same position you are with your pension. The pension is in a really good position. Uh, but the OPEB, you, there's still a lot of local governments that are funding that on a pay-as-you-go basis. So they're not, they don't have a VEBA set up. They don't have a trust fund set up. They are only paying the current year premiums for the retirees, and they're not setting anything aside to fund the future obligations. So, um, you know, you guys are, you're focused on this. I know you are because you're making these extra contributions, and the state has very focused on the retiree health care plans at this time as well, trying to get everybody to fund these to make sure the, the funds are there when the benefits come due. So, did I answer your question? Yep. Anything else on that? Okay. We did have one comment recommendation this year. It's similar to what we had in the past. The library, uh, because of the short staff they have over there, they don't have perfect segregation of duties, which means not one person should have control over every part of the cash receiving process. So. Um, it, it's it's not a huge deal. It's just something that we suggest that they take a look at to see how they can move things around to maybe mitigate that risk a little more than um, what it is now. Okay. There's two upcoming s standards, Gatsby's, that are going to impact the county or could impact the county in the future. Um, GASB 84 has to do with fiduciary activities where Gatsby has taken a look at agency funds, trust and agency funds, as well as fiduciary funds, and has kind of redefined what those are from an accounting uh, literature perspective. And this will be effect, effective for the fiscal year, year and now of 2019. <coughs> and, um, you, know, you know, Jan and I have had many discussions around this, and she's, I believe, working on it and, and going to be prepared for implementing that this year. But it's going to change some of the terminology in your report, change the presentation of some things potentially in your report, but I don't think we have a final determination of what that's going to look like at this point. And then GASB 87, this has to do with leases. So if the county has any significant leases right now or, or plans on entering into any significant leases, this is gonna change the way they're accounting for them and it's going to require the county to record an asset for that. It's called a right to use asset for the right to use that asset. And then there's gonna be a, a, a lease payable to show on your balance sheet that the county owes this money to somebody. So it's a little, a little change in um, philosophy from the old reporting standards. So that you have another year yet, that's not effective till 2020. Okay. They have motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carried. <coughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Item B, uh, I would like to have a motion to refer this to uh, September full board meeting as per a request from the clerk. So moved. Support. We have motion and support. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion <coughs> carry. <coughs> Item C, court administrator. Extension of grant for another grant year. Seeking um, authorization. Support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carry. 
Reports and resolutions of committee, committees, ways and means. Mr. Herrick, Commissioner Herrick, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I bring before you number 2019-117, the Office of Highway Safety Plan grant application grant from the Sheriff's Department. I move that resolution. Okay. Motion of support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Resolution number 2019-174, the Secondary Road Patrol Public Act 416 grant. I move that resolution. Support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Resolution number 2019-175, the Snowmobile Law Enforcement Grant for 2019-2020. I move that resolution. Support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Resolution number 2019-176, Justice Assistant Grant Application for 2019. I move that resolution. Support. We have motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion we'll carry. Resolution number 2019-177, Chief Deputy Clerk. I move that resolution. Support. We have motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion we'll carry. Resolution number 2019-178, the Jury Commission Annual Stipend. I move that resolution. Support. We have motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Resolution number 2019-179, the live barn agreement, Pacific Arena. I move that resolution. Support. We have motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Resolution number 2019-180, the 2020 orthophotography project. I move that resolution. Support. We have motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Resolution number 2019-181, the scrap tire cleanup grant program. I move that resolution. Support. We have motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Resolution number 2019-182, gas transportation for Constellation New Energy. I move that resolution. Support. We have motion to support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Resolution number 2019-183, Senior Citizen Service Employment Program Worksite Agreement. I move that resolution. Support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Resolution number 2019-184, acceptance of carryover funds from the Region 7, the AAA. I move that resolution. Support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Resolution number 2019-185, revised handy person services policy. I move that resolution. Support. We have motion to support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Resolution number 2019-186, acceptance of grant award from the Schwab Charitable Kathleen Biskupski Charitable Fund. I move that resolution. We have motion and support. Or, excuse me, I'm sorry. sorry. We have motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Resolution number 2019-187, revised grant submittal process for $5,000 or less. I move that resolution. Support. We have motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Resolution number 2019-188, payables in general. Move that I move that resolution. Support. We have motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion aye. carried. Resolution number 2019-189, budget adjustments in animal services and adoption and elections. I move that resolution. Support. Yeah. Motion support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Resolution number 2019-190, a bid for credit card processing. I move that resolution. Support. We have motion support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. 
and resolution number 2019-191, fiscal year 2020 grant service agreements. I move that resolution. Support. We have motion and support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Mr. Chairman, that is all from the Ways and Means Committee. Thank you, Commissioner Harry. Personnel and Human Services, Chairman Ryder. We have nothing before you today, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Ryder. Uh, Board of Commissioners, uh, Commissioner Lutz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, today for the Board of Commissioners, I bring 2019-192. It's the Labor Day 2019 resolution sponsored by Commissioners Kim Coonan in the 4th District and Tom Ryder in the 6th District. I move that resolution. Support. We have motion and support. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Next, I bring resolution 2019-193. It's the Sports Hall of Fame 2019, sponsored by Commissioner Juan Begick in the third district. Support I that resolution. We have motion and support. <laughs> we have motion and support. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Just motion carried. Next, uh, resolution 2019-194, we're going to withdraw that uh, at this time with no action taken. Thank you. And that may be brought up in the future, we just don't know. Uh, resolution 2019-195, it's reports from the county executive. I move that resolution to receive. Support. We have motion and support. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion That's carried. All. That's all I have from the Board of Commissioners. Thank you, Commissioner Lutz. Reports, County Executive. Mr. Yeah. Barsha. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would just like to uh, say again, we have another outstanding Bay County Fair. They wrapped up their activities, and I think uh, everyone was pleased. And I noticed we got some real positive media uh, coverage on TV5 and some other media outlets. Uh, I know that Commissioner Vaughn Pigick uh, and myself attended the 4-H uh, livestock exhibition and auction, and, and we both bought chickens at a pretty hefty price, so. <laughs> yeah, $100 cheaper for my chicken. But, uh, yeah, we've had a busy week and uh, wrapped up the budget sessions and the hearings I thought were very productive, and so today we're submitting to the Board of Commissioners the executive budget for 2020 for your consideration and, and amendments. And uh, I'll just say that, you know, we have one feature in it that says you, I think most of you are aware, 7% increase in health insurance premiums over last year, over 2018, in terms of our actual health expenses. So um, that's always a challenge, healthcare costs, they continue to escalate, but it is a lean budget. We've uh, not submitted very many, uh, uh, requests for expenditures that we don't think uh, you know aren't justified we tried to trim out as much uh, in the past that hadn't been uh, utilized or spent as we could this year keeping in mind that we have a very you know uh, only a 0.52 percent increase in our overall property valuation for the county for 2020 so um, it is a lean budget it's about 139 million and six hundred thousand dollars in total it is balanced uh, with the help of a little uh, from uh, from our uh, fund balance, I guess, which we still have in excess of $2 million in. So uh, we'll submit that and just say that uh, we look forward to working with you on crafting and well, that the budget we've crafted, I think, is one that I, hopefully you will, you will think accomplishes the goal of delivering essential services for the residents and taxpayers of Bay County. If anyone has any questions, and I know we're just submitting it, but we'll be working through it with you, and, and I know Jan might be able to answer any specifics if, if you have any. Commissioners? Motion to receive. Support. Okay. We have motion and support. <coughs> Excuse me. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. I have just one more comment, Mr. Chairman. That is, uh, you might have noticed the activity on first floor at the new Department of Veterans Affairs office. Uh, Geirsbach Construction is uh, underway and it's, uh, we're making quick progress, I think, on uh, transforming that office into a 
a very professional kind of state-of-the-art veterans office here on the first floor. So I want to thank you for all you've done. And also our great director of administrative services and veterans affairs on securing that grant that made this uh, new office possible without any county funds involved. So thank you. Thank you. Any unfinished business? New business. Miscellaneous. Here's a miscellaneous little tidbit for you. This year, Smokey the Bear turned 75 years old, if you can believe that. Keep that, keep that in mind. I think it's 75 years. Announcements. I think Laura has something that... Give us an update of what's going on. Thank you. Just briefly, I wanted to give a quick update about the Rock Reef Project in Saginaw Bay. Uh, again, everybody wanted to wait till the tall ships were had moved out of the harbor and out of the Saginaw River, and construction then began. Uh, the rocks and the barges uh, did come into the, the port of Saginaw, and they have begun construction out into the bay, dumping the rock and placing the rock. There will be some underwater video and underwater monitoring to make sure that that location is actually um, accurate. It's about seven miles offshore off the uh, uh, Quantica Sea, uh, mouth of the Quantica Sea River. And uh, they are actually, we can see when we were fishing this past weekend, and we can see them uh, working out there. Um, this rock reef is, it turned out to be a $1.3 million project. Uh, that money came from EPA to the DEQ to administer for this restoration project. It is a restoration of a historic fish spawning reef. It's not to increase the numbers of fish, but to increase the diversity in the fish spawning habitat. Uh, it will bring environmental benefits, cultural restoration, as well as economic benefits. Uh, again, this is only happening because of the work that's been done to um, improve agricultural practices over the past 30 years. Much of that is attributed to work Jim Barsh has worked on with the um, farm bills through the years uh, to, to change ag practices on land that's improved the water quality in the bay. Laura, and thank you. How many years have you been working on? A long time. <laughs> thank you, yes, yeah, well, it's been a long time. Thank you very time. much for all your efforts. All right, thank you. Yeah. Just one comment to thank Laura, too. I know she worked on this for years. I think eight years, wasn't it, Laura, or something? At least. Since the first, uh, yeah, at least eight or ten years and finally came to fruition, but it's going to be also a great recreational benefit and have an economic benefit for our uh, waterfront shoreline. And thank you uh, from me, Laura, for all the hard work you've done on this. And it's finally great to see it uh, actually under construction. So, I have an announcement, annual uh, Tri-County meeting. Just to remind everybody, Thursday, August the 15th at the uh, SBRC Marketplace Atrium in Saginaw. They're the host this year. Commissioner Bigay. I just want to comment on the TV spot last night on TV5 about the Bay Animal, uh, Bay County Animal Services, Services and the Adoption Center. Center. Uh, I'll, I'll remember it someday. <laughs> 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 but that uh, was a nice, nice story about the, the no kill and about the facilities out there. So, very good. Any other announcements? Appointments. October, Land Bank, one three-year term. <clears throat> Department of Health and Human Services, Board of Directors, one three-year term. Board of Canvassers, two four-year terms expiring. November, Building Authority, <clears throat> two six-year terms. December, Department on Aging Advisory Committee, four two-year terms in districts one, three, five, and seven. Is there a need for a closed session, ma'am? There is not, Mr. Chair. There is not. Thank you, ma'am. Always in order. Do we have a second? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign.